So on some previous videos on the Dyson HD01 hairdryer, we took a look at several things including this mystery box and what's inside and the GFCI. We also have a video on the disassembly of the Dyson hairdryer. We did some testing and we showed this somewhat in the disassembly and some in the repair number three. And the latest video being the Dyson HD01 repair number three where we did go through and show troubleshooting techniques as well as sharing a diagram. So this is what I call the Dyson HD01 detail. So if you want more information on this, you can see the repair number three video, but I definitely wanted to share the drawing with you here so you know what I was talking about. And then today in this video, we're gonna focus on the reassembly. So the first thing I'm going to do going back is take some tape and just a piece of scrap wire. I'm going to get the tape started on the scrap wire. And the reason I do that, I'll show you later. It'll stick to the wire instead of the wires on the Dyson. I'm just going to take this very flexible tape, like a 3M 33 plus tape. And I'm just going to go real light here, not heavy with the tape, just to keep it together, but keep it flexible. Make the end where we can get to it and pull it off easy, like a little tab, like so. And make sure your ring is in there. I had left mine in here. Just make sure it didn't turn around on you. So we're going to take the wire and get it started down in here. You see how it's going down into the handle. And just think about the way we're going to rotate. So we want to have the little cluster of wires, especially this thick part tucked in between in the little cavity or opening in between the two halves here, making sure that we don't pull on the bottom where the NTC wire is, the bottom the way that I'm holding it now, that is. Make sure nothing's catching on the little flange in there for the threads, and we'll just slowly work it in like so to make sure the front's going to line up as well. Sometimes it's hard to get it through the the little threaded tabs that's in the housing because it is catching on the board as you can see here on top i gotta push this yep and it slides right in like so get our ring ready to push in here it's all gotta go forward and then turn a half a turn if you see the little programming header here to the left the little white connector that's usually how i do it is to the left at like nine o'clock and then rotate it down once you get it fully forward so we'll make sure it's seated well here before we try to turn it. Make sure our wire has moved down as, as we get ready to rotate and it looks like it's ready. Everything's good. We can rotate it a little bit by hand. You see it's moving some with my fingers just pushing on it. Now I'm gonna take my long needle nose, kind of like a spanner wrench. I'm gonna rotate it as I make sure the wires are coming out. Make sure the front's rotating as well. The two halves with the heater element and the board itself, they should be moving together. So I'm almost latched in here. I just got to go a little bit more and there we go. That feels good. I think that's all locked in and our wires are fully out. Nothing's pinched that I can tell. We'll get the tape off and uh, take a better look, but looks like everything is good and not caught on anything. That's why we left a little flap here at the end to be able to pull this off very easily. And when we get to the end, it should just come right off with no issue because we started with our tape on the wire. So that's why we started it that way. So the tape's not stuck up in there because we don't want that to be left in there stuck close to the element, of course, or anything that could impede the airflow. I'm going to tape up this white wire before I heat shrink it later because I did nick it with the razor when I was cutting the heat shrink off of this one. It's going to be totally covered up by the handle, but just want to go ahead and put some tape and we'll heat shrink it later, as we'll see. You see how these wires are? We'll make sure one by one that they do reach where they're supposed to. I'll go ahead and get our parts back out. I had them in storage and, and uh, set aside in a little case because I had to wait on my parts to get here. The thermal fuses and the high temperature connectors um, to repair this one in the previous video. We see our switch has to go down into its spot like so. So we'll get some of these wires out of the way. Just making sure that everything will reach and fit in position. We'll just do a little test run here with the board first and make sure the board to get in position and the wires are free 
and not caught up on anything just inside the handle out of sight here and that looks good we do have to run the wires through there so it's not through yet but we'll make sure the switch does fit in there correctly and make sure nothing's hindering the switch seating in its location yep I like it I think that's gonna be good so yeah it should be just like this but we do have to get our wires in place so I'll show you here I'm gonna take the black wire and go through first make sure we got plenty of length here then the white wire and I also got to get this white wire in the little groove here beside where the switch is and there's a tab on the left side of the switch if you can see that that's going to go over the white wire it's going to keep popping out until I get everything in place but so I'll show you a snapshot of that later as well and there we go we got the white wire in place as you can see there in the upper right hand corner it's up under the switch tab so the white wire and the little ribbon that goes to the board they're both under that tab we're just going to get the heat shrink in place and make sure the white wire is good there and then the groove and then we can take our little white switch back plate and slide it in place and that's going to make a really low profile cover here we're going to get our T5 screws back in this backing plate. Yep, that started. We're just going to do the same thing with these four, just making sure that they do start into the plate. These screws are the shorter ones, so sometimes they're a little bit hard to get started. But while I'm showing this, I'll also show on the top right of the screen, I plug the motor back up around this time also just simply plugging it back up so you want to make sure you put everything back on your cord if you took it off before you connect your wires and put your heat shrink back on so even your filter housing like so and now that everything's on there including your o-rings and everything right if you took them off then we'll snap this back together and I mentioned in the disassembly video that <laughs> these are very tight connectors and they are uh, they're really good connectors so I always try to save these even if I'm replacing a cord I try to solder these back on and, and save them because they are some uh, really good tight connectors for their size and they got to fit in a little tight slot here just going to get our heat shrink back on here We're going to turn this little white part of our core grip down. It fits into a slot. And also this strain relief here turns a certain way as well. They are keyed. And once you turn them right, they'll fall right into place like so. But I do have to get these wires pushed in. I use a little bit longer and thicker heat shrink here, so, so I'm having to push them in a little bit, but yep, that fit together really nice. I'm just going to bring down this O-ring I had up top just to hold a handle together so I can do some testing here. I'm going to be careful and plug it up. Hold the handle together and turn it on. All right. Cold shot. That's right. I'm going to go ahead and put this back switch cover back on. Don't want to forget to put our, our rubber seal on here. It should line up with the clips and push straight in. There we go. Now we can test out our buttons. Yep. Awesome. Definitely heating up. 
pretty powerful little dryer. All right, well, let's finish putting it together. This is our 1T8, the longer screw. Goes back in the handle in the core grip area. Magnetize the screwdriver to help hold the screws. And here is our shorter T6 screws that goes across the handle. We'll put our O-rings in place and what I believe to be our sound or noise abatement filter in here in place and then we'll slide the handle tube up and over the O-ring and don't forget your upper O-ring like I did here. I had to go back and do it but I didn't do it on video. I forgot I had brought my O-ring down and I used it for the middle. It should be an O-ring below the switches and an o-ring on top of the switches. The upper one should go up close to the Dyson housing itself at the very end or top of the handle. We got a longer T6 that goes here to hold the handle forward. We're gonna put our screen filter in place. If you see these little tabs right here, they line up on the front part of the dryer here. There's a little slot. So once you push this on, if we get one side started in that slot, it pushes right in place. And then we'll bring the other one around and in, and it should find the slot and snap together just like that. So here's two more T6s in the bottom to hold the screen in place. And then all we have to do is just put our filter cover on. And there we go. Awesome. So now I have to put my buttons on. I'm going to go ahead and test the fit. I know I got to clean some of the glue off of these to fit and align properly. Yep, I can feel the glue on there. I'm going to take these and... Um, Try to get this glue off. I'm going to use a little small screwdriver. And sometimes I use a razor blade. And I do scrape a lot of this glue off. I'll fast forward through a lot of this. And that fits the hole a lot better. Feels really good. I need to clean these up with some alcohol before I try to re-glue them. I'll clean up the buttons and then on the little switch plate where they go. Let this dry and we'll come back with some B7000. I have used super glue and it actually does work fine. But this B7000 I feel like might do better, stay a little more flexible. And it is some good strong glue. It's got that little precision tip and I like that. It will take these a little while to set up, but I'm in no rush. That feels good. I'm going to tape it up right there. I'm going to use some Kapton tape. That way it don't give or stretch. Put a little pressure down. and Now the cold shot button. Yep. Some more Kapton tape. Push it down and... We'll let this set overnight. We'll come back and see how it does. Now it's set overnight. Let's go ahead and take the tape off while I hold the button so I don't pull on it too hard. Yep, let's hold the button. Yep. Make sure they work good. Nice. Let's go ahead and test it out one last time here. Definitely getting hot.
even on the lowest fan setting it'll probably still clean my bench off yep it sure will well i hope you found these dyson videos helpful and if you did please like share and subscribe i'm gonna have a lot of items down in the video description with some affiliate links and any of those links you click on help support the channel and i greatly appreciate it so thanks so much for watching and god bless